Hi there. So I've come up with uh, what I think is a fun little combo of kind of older gear and newer gear and I wanted to show you. So this is a way that you can breathe some life into some older piece of gear. Um, something that is either just a MIDI controller or ideally something that can function both as a MIDI controller and also output sound on its own. So um, let me just quickly show you kind of how I have things hooked up here. Okay, so this is a Yamaha PSR-225GM. Basically, this is what I'd call a practice piano. It's uh, if you were taking piano lessons and you asked the teacher, what should I buy? They're probably going to recommend something like this. So it's got all kinds of stuff in there for just learning how to play the piano, different chord modes and stuff like that. So it does generate its own sounds. It does actually have its own built-in speakers that actually sound okay. Um, but what I'm using is the, the line out, the headphones out, which is actually just mono. I'm using a stereo adapter, but it doesn't matter. It's just mono. Um, DC in, of course, for power. And this one has both MIDI out and in. So I'm using MIDI out through a standard MIDI cable through an adapter. This is a type A 5-pin um, MIDI to TRS adapter into the MIDI input on the little Korg NTS-1. And uh, so that means that any time I press a key here, it's also triggering a note on the NTS-1. Um, now also, it's taking its sync signal from here. So the, uh, the practice piano here is actually master clock as well. And uh, the USB is just powering right now. I'm not doing anything with MIDI over USB. So that's just power. And then um, here's my audio input from the Yamaha keyboard, right? So output there, input here. So that means that whatever sounds the Yamaha makes, I can also apply the NTS-1's effects to it um, while simultaneous, simultaneously playing it as a synth. And then lastly, just as a simple little drum machine, I have the PO32 tonic here. I'm taking sync out from the NTS-1 to sync in on here. So that means that my master clock over here is controlling both of these. So, uh, so everything's in sync, which is nice. And also because I really wouldn't have any other way of going from sync out to this to sync into this because they use different formats. So the NTS-1 is kind of converting between uh, you know, MIDI sync signal and the Korg specific sync signal, which is nice. So the other thing, I have both of these routed into my mixer here. Um, so these two are the, the tonic, the drum machine, and then these two are the com combination of the NTS-1 as well as the Yamaha. And what I have noticed is that the, um, the NTS-1, when you're passing audio through it like this, you know, audio is coming in here and going out here. When doing that kind of audio throughput, the volume output can be a bit low, so I did have to kind of boost that up a bit. You see that's higher than I had the drum machine turned, turned down a little bit. Um, or if you're able to use a channel that has gain boost, you can do that as well. I'm just out of the adapters for that, so I had to use RCA. Um, but yeah, and that's going into my audio interface, and then I'd record into the computer. Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm actually just using the the default grand piano sound on this, so the sound one, of course it has a lot of other sounds in it that it can make, but um, you know, for what it is, it sounds pretty good. Um, and it, this is just basically playing back samples, it says on here, stereo sample piano. Um, so this is really not a synth, it's more like a sample player, but... Um, so what's nice with this is, uh, with the Yamaha, I've got full polyphony, so I can play it just like I would a piano. Um, but the NTS-1 is just monophonic, so if I'm playing a single note, I'm getting a note from here and a note from here simultaneously. If I'm playing a chord, I'm getting a note from here and whatever the first note I played from here, which typically is the lowest note. So if you play a chord arpeggiated like that, it's going to stay in your highest note because that was the last note that you played. But um, anyway, when you're playing a chord just all at the same time, sometimes it's a little random because you're not quite sure which one this one's going to pick up, which note. But anyway, um, so now with this volume control, I can turn off the sound of the Yamaha. So now you're hearing just the NTS-1. So again, I play a chord and that's meaningless because I can only play one note. So just play one note. So that's just this. Um, and uh, so I actually have the volume on the back here completely turned all the way up and I actually have a piece of tape over it so I don't knock it down um, because this volume control back here is going to control both of these simultaneously which I don't really want. So well how can I change the volume of 
the NTS-1, well you can't really, but you can use the filter kind of like a volume control, right? So I switched to just the basic low pass filter, and now my cut off, right, turn it all the way down, now I get no sound. So I can turn this up. So now I have just the Yamaha by itself with none of the NTS-1 sound. But, even though my filter's all the way down, the audio in doesn't route through the filters, so I can still apply all these effects. So currently this is nothing of this synth, only the Yamaha, but let's add, say, a reverb effect. Let's do this plate reverb. So that's without. And with. All right, let's maybe do something more obvious. The space reverb is great. So, now let's, uh, let's bring the NTS-1 back in. So this is just applying this basic saw oscillator to it, right? I'm gonna turn this one back down again. Let's dial in a nice sound for the NTS-1. So that reverb is still hitting, which is fine. Um, let's do... Okay. So my filter's all the way open here. All right, that's off. And my resonance is kind of low. If you want max volume out of this, by the way, Turn the envelope generator off, and it basically becomes like a drone. It'll just keep playing that note forever because there's never a decay, which is kind of cool. Okay, I think I'll I'll do just a little bit. So that's zero attack, full levels. Zero attack, full release. Now uh, let's play with the arpeggiator a little bit. So that's in lap latch mode. So that's only when I hold it. I'm going to turn that reverb to something simpler. Let's just do... So now let's bring back in some of the Yamaha sound. Alright, so here it's just kind of filling out every time I press a note. sounded pretty cool. Um, of course I could change the sound on this from grand piano to something else but I think I'm just gonna stick with uh, the default sound on this for now. So this, oh yeah this is cool too. So say I play a note on or a chord on here right? Right so I get a full chord out of this one but in on this one I'm getting an arpeggiated chord. Right because it's starting on the root note and I can change what I want that to do. So right now, so here, there's a major chord. So if I play C major, right, and A major, or if you just set it to octave, then it's just going to do, you know, 
those two, so it's gonna always work with whatever chord you're playing. If you're switching between major and minor and whatever. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, this is all velocity sensitive too. So this keyboard's velocity sensitive, and it's passing that through to the NTS-1, which responds to the velocity. So I'll just... So you get the idea. Uh, so let's try to play a little something here. Thank you. 